Introduction Hey kids, today we will learn equilibrium. Physical equilibrium involves a state of equilibrium of a system which undergoes phase transformation. For example, dissolution of salt, evaporation of water, etc. The equilibrium in chemical processes such as decomposition of calcium carbonate or reaction between hydrogen and iodine is called chemical equilibrium. The common physical equilibria are solid and liquid, liquid and gas, solid and gas. In homogeneous equilibria, the reactants and the products are in the same phase, whereas in chemical equilibria, the reactants and the products are in the different phase. So, throughout this module, we will learn equilibrium. Objectives At the end of this lesson, you will be able to Explain equilibrium in physical state. Explain equilibrium in dissolution of solid or gases in liquids. Explain chemical equilibrium. State law of chemical equilibrium. Explain homogeneous equilibria. Explain heterogeneous equilibria. Discuss applications of equilibrium constant. Discuss factors affecting equilibria. Equilibrium in physical state When the concentration of reactant becomes constant, such that it does not change and the reaction appears to be stopped, the state of system in which no net change occurs is called equilibrium. Solid-liquid equilibrium When a pure solid substance is heated, it starts changing into liquid at a certain temperature. At this temperature, the solid and liquid states of the substance coexist under the given conditions of pressure. For any pure substance, at atmospheric pressure, the temperature at which the solid and liquid states can coexist is called the normal melting point or the normal freezing point of the substance. At melting point, the solid substance is in equilibrium with liquid state of the substance. Let us consider ice and water at 273 Kelvin, melting point of ice. Taken in a perfectly insulated thermos flask. An interesting feature of this system is that the temperature as well as the masses of ice and water remains constant. This represents a dynamic equilibrium between ice and water. As there is no change in mass of ice and water so the number of molecules going from ice into water is equal to the number of molecules going from water into ice. Thus, at the equilibrium, Rate of melting is equal to rate of freezing. Liquid vapor equilibrium. To understand this equilibrium, let us take an example of evaporation of, of water in a closed vessel. When a small amount of water is taken in an evacuated vessel at room temperature, it starts evaporating. At first, the pressure inside the vessel increases. As the number of molecules in gas phase increases, it strikes the water surface and it gets captured. This is called condensation. The rate of condensation is less than rate of evaporation in beginning, but with increase in molecules of gas phase, the rate of condensation increases and it becomes equal to the rate of evaporation. At this state, the equilibrium is said to be established. Thus, at equilibrium, rate of evaporation is equal to rate of condensation. Solid vapor equilibrium. The process of transformation directly from the solid phase to the gaseous phase without passing through an intermediate liquid phase is called sublimation. The reverse process, changing a gas directly into solid is called deposition. For example, dry ice. Equilibrium involving dissolution of solid or gases in liquids. Solids in liquids. A solution in which no more solute particles can be dissolved is called saturated solution. For example, if we keep on adding sugar into water, then a stage comes when no more sugar dissolves into water. The saturated solution corresponds to state of equilibrium. When the rate of dissolution of sugar into liquid is equal, to the rate of precipitation, then equilibrium is said to be established. This equilibrium is dynamic in nature. It can be demonstrated by adding some radioactive sugar into a saturated solution of non-radioactive sugar. 
it is observed that the solution and non-radioactive sugar also becomes radioactive. Gases in liquid When a cold drink is opened, the carbon dioxide dissolved in it fizzes out rapidly. This represents an equilibrium situation. At a given pressure, there is equilibrium between the molecules of the solute in gaseous state and the molecules dissolved in the liquid. It can be expressed as Effect of pressure on the solubility of a gas in a liquid is given by Henry's law. This law states that the mass of a gas dissolved in a given mass of a solvent at a given temperature is directly proportional to the pressure of the gas above the solvent. M is directly proportional to P. M is equal to Kp. The solubility of gas in a liquid decreases with increase in temperature. General characteristics of equilibria involving physical processes At equilibrium, the measurable properties of the system becomes constant. At equilibrium, there is a dynamic balance between the two opposite processes. The equilibrium can only be attained in a closed system. When equilibrium is attained, there exists an expression involving the concentration of substances involved in equilibrium, which reaches a constant value at a given temperature. The magnitude of the constant value of the concentration indicates the extent to which the process proceeds before reaching equilibrium. Equilibrium in chemical processes Dynamic equilibrium The reactions in which products do not react to form reactants back are called irreversible reactions. For example, silver nitrate reacts with sodium chloride, gives rise to silver chloride and sodium nitrate. The reactions in which Products react to form the reactants back are called reversible reactions. The reversible reactions are represented by putting two arrows pointing in opposite direction. For example, hydrogen reacts with iodine gives rise to hydrogen iodide. The state at which there is no further change in concentration of reactants and product is called chemical equilibrium. At equilibrium, the rate of forward reaction is equal to rate of backward reaction. Chemical equilibrium is also dynamic in nature because reaction does not stop at equilibrium. The rates of forward and backward reaction being equal, the concentration of reactants and products remains constant. Let us illustrate the state of equilibrium with the help of example. Calcium carbonate when heated to 1073 Kelvin in a closed evacuated vessel starts decomposing to yield calcium oxide and carbon dioxide gas. Carbon dioxide builds a pressure. The pressure goes on increasing as the reaction proceeds and finally becomes constant and remains so long as the temperature remains constant. It appears as if the reaction has come to a stop, although CaCO3, calcium carbonate, is still present. This indicates that this system has attained the equilibrium state. Law of chemical equilibrium and equilibrium constant The law of mass action states that at constant temperature, the rate of a chemical reaction is directly proportional to the product of the molar concentration of reacting species with each concentration term raised to the power equal to the numerical coefficient of that species in the chemical equation. Let us consider a simple reversible reaction. The reactants A and B react to form the products C and D. The concentration in an equilibrium mixture are related as Name it as equation 1. Equation 1 is called the equilibrium equation. Kc is called equilibrium constant. And the term is called the equilibrium constant expression for a general reaction of the type. The expression for equilibrium constant can be written as where C is subscript to K. That is, Kc is expressed in concentration of mole per liter. Law of chemical equilibrium can be stated as at a given temperature, the ratio of product of equilibrium concentration of the products to that of the reactants with each concentration term raised 
to the power equal to the respective stoichiometric coefficients in the balanced chemical equation has a constant value. Let the equilibrium constant for the reaction be Kc dash. Then the relation between Kc and Kc dash is Kc dash is equal to 1 by Kc. Homogeneous equilibria. In this equilibria, the reactants and products are in same phase. Equilibrium constant in gaseous system for the reactions in which both reactants and products are in gaseous state. The equilibrium constant is expressed in terms of partial pressure. For these reactions, the equilibrium constant is denoted by Kp. The ideal gas equation is Pv is equal to nRT. P is equal to N by VRT, where P is pressure in Pascal. N is the number of moles of the gas. V is the volume in M cube. T is the temperature in Kelvin. And R is equal to 0 0.0831 bar liter per mole Kelvin. N by V can be expressed as concentration C in mole per liter. And P is in bar. So, P is equal to CRT. For the general reaction, The value of Kp is where Pc, Pd, Pa, Pb are partial pressure of C, D, A and B respectively. And it can be solved to the relation between Kp and Kc is Kp is equal to Kc into Rt raised to the power delta N where delta N is equal to Number of moles of gaseous products minus number of moles of gaseous reactants in the balanced chemical equation. Pressure is expressed in bar. Heterogeneous equilibria. The equilibria in which the substances involved are present in different phases is called heterogeneous equilibria. For example, when liquid is in equilibrium with gas as shown below, the equilibrium constant is... The concentration of pure liquid is 1, that is, H2O in liquid form is equal to 1. Hence, Applications of Equilibrium Constant Characteristics of Equilibrium Constant The value of equilibrium constant is independent of initial concentrations of reacting species. The value of equilibrium constant changes with change in temperature. For a reversible reaction, the equilibrium constant for a backward reaction is inverse of the equilibrium constant for the forward reaction. The equilibrium constant is independent of the presence of catalyst. If equilibrium constant is expressed in terms of concentration, it has different units for different reactions. Predicting the extent of a reaction the magnitude of equilibrium constant tells us about the extent to which the reactants are converted into the products before the equilibrium is attained. Predicting the direction of the reaction. The reaction quotient Q measures the relative amount of products and reactants present during a reaction at a particular point in time. It is denoted by QC with molar concentration and QP with partial pressures. For a general reaction, if Qc greater than Kc, the net reaction is taking place in backward direction, that is direction of reactants. If Qc less than Kc, the net reaction is taking place in forward direction, that is direction of products. If Qc is equal to Kc, the reaction is at equilibrium, that is no net reaction is taking place. Calculating equilibrium concentrations. Write chemical equation for the equilibrium. Write equilibrium constant expression for the reaction. Express all unknown concentrations in terms of a single variable x. Substitute the equilibrium concentrations in terms of x in the equilibrium constant expression. Solve the equation for x. Substitute the value obtained for x in the expressions in the step 3 to calculate equilibrium concentrations.
relationship between equilibrium constant K, reaction quotient Q and Gibbs energy G, the energy freely available from the system at particular set of condition which can be put into useful work is called Gibbs energy. The relation is Name it as equation 1 where it represents standard Gibbs energy. We know that at equilibrium Q is equal to K and delta G is equal to 0 from equation 1. Rearranging gives This equation relates the standard Gibbs free energy change to the temperature and equilibrium constant. The equilibrium constant is If change in standard Gibbs free energy is greater than 0, then K is less than 1, making the backward reaction feasible. If change in standard Gibbs free energy is less than 0, then K is greater than 1, making the forward reaction feasible. Factors affecting equilibria The effect of parameters such as concentration, temperature, pressure can be studied with the help of Le Chatelier's principle. It states that if a system at equilibrium is subjected to a change of concentration, pressure or temperature, the equilibrium shifts in the direction that tends to undo the effect of the change. Effect of concentration change According to Le Chatelier's principle, when the concentration of the substance in a system at equilibrium is increased, then the equilibrium will shift so as to use the substance added. Suppose at equilibrium, one of the reactants is added. The equilibrium will shift in the forward direction to consume the reactants. On the other hand, if one of the products is added, the equilibrium will shift in the backward direction to consume the products. For example, on a humid day, we sweat more. The sweating on a humid day is more because surrounding air has large amount of water vapors and our body cannot lose water at water vapors. Factors affecting equilibria Effect of pressure change According to Le Chatelier's principle, increase of external pressure should affect the equilibrium in such a way as to reduce the pressure. This implies that the equilibrium will shift in the direction which has smaller number of moles of the gaseous substances. For example, if we increase the pressure, the volume occupied by the system decreases and the number of molecules per unit volume increases. This effect can be counterbalanced if the equilibrium shifts in a direction involving less number of moles. So, increase in pressure in this case will favor the forward reaction. Effect of inert gas addition At constant volume, the inert gas increases the total pressure of the system, but the partial pressure of the reactant and product remains same and the equilibrium remains undisturbed. At constant pressure, the addition of inert gas will increase the volume. So, to counterbalance this effect, the equilibrium will shift to the side where number of moles are increased. For example, The addition of inert gas at constant pressure will push the equilibrium to the backward direction. Effect of temperature change A chemical equilibrium involves two reactions, one favoring the product and other favoring the reactants. If one reaction is exothermic, the other must be endothermic. For example, the forward reaction is exothermic and backward reaction is endothermic. Now, if the temperature is increased, then the equilibrium favors backward direction as it tends to undo the effect of added heat. If temperature is decreased, the equilibrium will shift in forward direction. So, low temperature favors the formation of ammonia. Effect of a catalyst The presence of a catalyst does not disturb the state of equilibrium because it increases the rate of forward as well as backward reaction to the same extent, the reaction of formation of ammonia can be carried out at high temperature because high temperature favors backward reaction. They have to be maintained at low temperature, but at low temperature, the rate of reaction is very slow and it takes very long to attain the equilibrium. To increase the rate of reaction, catalysts are used 
so that equilibrium is attained early. Did you know? A research team led by Dr. Digo Donzis, an assistant professor in the Department of Aerospace Engineering, has been awarded $2.2 million by the Air Force Office of Scientific Research, AFOSR, to study the complex interaction of turbulent flows in the presence of thermal non-equilibrium. The Basic Research Initiative, BRI, award is given to study thermal and mechanical non-equilibrium effects on turbulent flows, in particular, the fundamental mechanisms for energy exchanges through direct numerical simulations, molecular simulations and experiments. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned. When the concentration of reactant becomes constant such that it does not change and the reaction appears to be stopped, this state of system in which no net change occurs is called equilibrium. At melting point, the solid substance is in equilibrium with liquid state of the substance. In equilibrium between liquid and vapor state, rate of evaporation is equal to rate of condensation. The direct conversation from solid phase to the gaseous phase is called sublimation and the reverse of it is called deposition. A solution is said to be saturated if no more solute particles can be dissolved. The law of mass action states that at constant temperature the rate of a chemical reaction is directly proportional to the product of the molar concentration of reacting species with each concentration term raised to the power equal to the numerical coefficient of that species in the chemical equation. If the reactants and the products are in the same phase, then the equilibrium established is called homogeneous equilibria. The equilibria in which the substances involved are present in different phases is called heterogeneous equilibria. The relationship between equilibrium constant K, reaction quotient Q and Gibbs energy G is Factors affecting equilibria are concentration change, pressure change, inert gas addition, temperature change, effect of catalyst. Introduction Hello students. Good morning sir. Very good morning. Today we will perform an experiment to identify the acidic, basic or neutral solution. Fine sir. First, put a drop of solution 1 on the blue litmus paper. It turns into red. It shows acidic behavior. Next, put a drop of solution 2 on the red litmus paper. It turns into blue. It shows basic behavior. Finally, we test for solution 3. The color is not changing. It shows that this solution is neutral and we can say that solution is at equilibrium. Sir, what is equilibrium? Equilibrium is a condition when the number of moles of base becomes equal to number of moles of acid. Let's learn more about it. In this lesson, you will study the physical and chemical equilibrium. Objectives At the end of this lesson, you will be able to Explain ionic equilibrium in solution Discuss the concept of acid, bases and salts Explain pH scale Discuss factors affecting acid strength Discuss hydrolysis of salts and pH of their solution. Define buffer solution. Define solubility product constant. Ionic equilibrium in solution. The aqueous solution of substance such as sodium chloride, sulfuric acid etc. conduct electricity. Whereas aqueous solution of sugar, urea, etc. does not conduct electricity. The substances which conduct electricity in their aqueous solution are called electrolytes. On the other hand, those which do not conduct electricity in their aqueous solution are called non-electrolytes. The electrolytes which almost completely ionized in their solution are called strong electrolytes. 
On the other hand, the electrolytes weakly ionized in their solutions are called weak electrolytes. The equilibrium which involved ions in aqueous solution is called ionic equilibrium. Acids, bases and salts Electrolytes may be acids, bases or salts. Acids are sour in taste. Vinegar contains acetic acid. Tamarind contains tartaric acid. Acids turn blue litmus paper into red. Bases are bitter in taste. They turn red litmus paper into blue. Caustic soda, washing soda are commonly used bases. Arrhenius concept of acids and bases. An acid is a substance that when added to water increases the concentration of H plus ions. Whereas, base is a substance that when added to water, increases the concentration of OH- ions. Acids such as HCl and HNO3, which are most completely ionized in aqueous solutions, are termed as strong acids. Whereas, acids such as CH3COOH, which are weakly ionized, are called weak acids. Similarly, bases which are almost completely ionized in aqueous solution are called strong bases, for example, NaOH and KOH. The bases such as NH4OH are only slightly ionized and are called weak bases. H plus ion is formed by the loss of electron, therefore it is simply a proton and cannot exist independently. So it is considered to be present in hydrated form in combination with water molecule as H3O plus. H3O plus ion is called hydronium ion. Similarly, hydroxyl ion is hydrated to give species such as H3O2- minus ions. The Bronsted Lowry Acids and Bases According to them, an acid is a substance that can donate a proton. A base is a substance that can accept a proton. Conjugate acid, base pairs. In the forward reaction, water donates a proton to ammonia, base, and acts as acid. In the reverse reaction, NH4 plus ions donate a proton to the OH minus ions, base, and act as acid. A base formed by the loss of proton by an acid is called conjugate base of the acid, whereas an acid formed by gain of a proton by the base is called conjugate acid of the base. In this example, OH- minus is the conjugate base of H2O and NH4- plus is conjugate acid of NH3. Acid-base pairs such as H2O, OH- minus and NH4- plus by NH3 which are formed by loss or gain of a proton are called conjugate acid-base pairs. Example Write the conjugate acids for the following Bronsted bases H2O, NH3 and C2H5OH Solution The conjugate acid is formed by gain of a proton by the base. Thus, the conjugate acids of the given bases are For H2O, conjugate acid is H3O+. For NH3, conjugate acid is NH4+. For C2H5OH, conjugate acid is C2H5OH2+. Lewis Acids and Bases According to Lewis concept, an acid is a substance which can accept a pair of electrons. A base is a substance which can donate a pair of electrons. For example, in the reaction, 
BF3 acts as acid. Ionization of acids and bases. The ionization constant of water and its ionic product. Pure water itself is very weak electrolyte and ionizes according to the equation or simply written as for which the ionization constant is given by Ki is equal to concentration of H plus into concentration of OH minus by concentration of H2O. As water is poorly ionized, its concentration is found to be poorly ionized. Its concentration can be combined with the ionization constant, Ki to give a new constant, known as ionic product of water, Kw. Name it as equation 1. The concentration of OH- in pure water is same as that of H+. Therefore, Kw is equal to H plus square. The value of H plus in water at 25 degrees Celsius is found to be 1.0 into 10 raised to the power minus 7 m. The value of ionic product at 25 degrees Celsius is thus equal to 10 raised to the power minus 14 m square. From equation 1. For neutral solution, concentration of H plus is equal to concentration of OH minus is equal to square root of Kw. For acidic solution, concentration of H plus is greater than concentration of OH minus. For basic solution, concentration of H plus is less than concentration of OH minus. The pH scale. pH of a solution can be defined as negative logarithm of hydrogen ion concentration. For neutral water at 25 degrees Celsius is given by pH is equal to minus log of 1.0 into 10 raised to the power minus 7, which is equal to 7. The pH corresponding to the acidic and basic solution at 25 degrees Celsius will be less than and greater than 7 respectively. We can define pOH scale as the negative logarithm of hydroxyl ion concentration. Both pH and pOH are related to each other through the expression pH plus pOH is equal to PKW. The value of PKW is 14 at 25 degrees Celsius. PKW controls the relative concentrations of hydrogen and hydroxyl ions as their product is a constant. Ionization constants of weak acids. Consider a weak acid HX that is partially ionized in the aqueous solution and it can be represented as let initial concentration of HX be C let alpha be the extent of ionization change so equilibrium concentration of HX is C minus C alpha H3O plus equilibrium concentration is plus C alpha and X minus equilibrium concentration is plus C alpha the equilibrium constant for the reaction is Ka is equal to C square alpha square by C into 1 minus alpha. Ka is equal to C alpha square by 1 minus alpha. Ka is called the dissociation or ionization constant of acid HX. It can be represented in terms of molar concentration. The pH scale for the hydrogen ion concentration has been extended to get Ionization constant of weak bases The ionization of weak base XOH can be represented as The equilibrium constant for base ionization is represented by Kb and is called as base ionization constant. 
it is given as if C be the initial concentration and alpha be the degree of the ionization of base, so the equilibrium constant can be written as Kb is equal to C alpha square by 1 minus alpha. The pH scale for the hydrogen ion concentration has been extended to get Relation between Ka and Kb the equilibrium constant for a net reaction is the product of equilibrium constant for individual reactions. It can be represented as K net is equal to K1, K2, K3, so on. For conjugate acid-base pair, Ka, Kb is equal to Kw. Di and polybasic acids and di and polyacidic bases. The acids which contain more than one ionizable hydrogen atom in a molecule are known as polybasic acids. For a dibasic acid, H2M, name it as reaction 1, name it as reaction 2. The equilibrium constant for the reaction 1, Ka1 is equal to H plus into Hm minus by H2M. Ka1 is called the first ionization constant. The equilibrium constant for the reaction 2, Ka2 is equal to H plus into M square minus by Hm minus. Ka2 is called the second ionization constant. Ka1 is greater than Ka2 because of more electrostatic force. Factors affecting acid strength. Bond strength. The strength of the bond between the acidic proton and the rest of the molecule will have an effect on acidity. The weaker the bond, the more acidic the acid will be generally. Bond polarity A highly polar bond between acidic hydrogen and another atom tends to make it easier for the proton to leave the molecule and makes it more acidic than would happen for a non-polar bond. For acids of elements in the same row, the bond strength tend to be more similar to each other. And so the polarity of the bond plays a greater role in determining acid strength. Since polarity depends on the electronegativity of the atoms involved, acid strength tends to increase with electronegativity because the bond tends to be more polar. Common ion effect in the ionization of acids and bases. The common ion effect is the shift in an ionic equilibrium caused by the addition of a solute that provides an ion that takes part in equilibrium. Consider the solution of acetic acid, HC2H3O2. If we add HCl aqueous to this solution, HCl aqueous is a strong acid. It provides H3O plus ion which is present on the right side of the equation for acetic acid ionization, according to the Lee Chatelier's principle. The equilibrium composition should shift to the left. The degree of ionization of acetic acid is decreased by the addition of a strong acid. This depression of the ionization of acetic acid by HCl is an example of the common ion effect. Hydrolysis of salts and pH of their solutions Hydrolysis is a process in which water reacts with salt to form an acid and a base. Salt of weak acid and a strong base. The hydrolysis of a salt MX of this type. In solution MX, the strong base MOH undergo complete dissociation whereas Acid HX being weak acid remains almost undissociated. 
the pH of the solution of this type is more than 7. Salt of strong acid and weak base. The hydrolysis of a salt MX of this type. In solution MX, the strong acid HX undergo complete dissociation, whereas weak base MOH remains almost undissociated. The pH of the solution of this type is less than 7. Salt of weak acid and weak base. The hydrolysis of a salt MX of this type. In solution MX, the weak acid HX and weak base MOH both remain in partially dissociated form. The pH of the solution of this type is pH is equal to 7 plus 1 by 2 into pKa minus pKb. If the value of pKa minus pKb is positive, then the pH is more than 7. And if the value of pKa minus pKb is negative, then the pH is less than 7. Buffer Solutions A buffer solution is defined as a solution which resists a change in pH on addition of small amount of acid or base. Buffer Action The ability of buffer solution to resist change in pH on addition of acid or base is called buffer action. A strong acid such as nitric acid or hydrochloric acid can act as a buffer with a low pH. Solubility equilibria of sparingly soluble salts. The solubility depends on the lattice enthalpy of the salt and the solvation enthalpy of the ions in a solution. Solubility product constant. For any sparingly soluble salt which dissociates to set up the equilibrium, the solubility product constant may be defined as concentration of A Y plus raised to the power X into concentration of B X minus raised to the power Y. Whereas A Y plus and B X minus denote the positive and negative ions respectively and X and Y represent the number of these ions in the formula of the electrolyte. Thus, the solubility product of a sparingly soluble salt at a given temperature may be defined as the product of the concentrations of its ions in the saturated solution with each concentration term raised to the power equal to the number of times the ion occurs in the equation representing the dissociation of the electrolyte. Knowing the solubility of the salt, its solubility product can be calculated. For example, consider the salt AB. Suppose at a particular temperature, its solubility is S mole L-1. S moles of salts on ionization will give S moles of A plus and S moles of B minus. KSP is equal to concentration of A plus into concentration of B minus is equal to S into S is equal to S square. Common ion effect on solubility of ionic salts. If NaCl solution is added to AgCl solution having Cl- as common ion, solubility of AgCl will decrease because Cl- from NaCl will combine with Ag plus to form AgCl. Similarly, if concentration of one of its ion is decreased, more salt will dissolve to increase the concentration of both the ions till once again KSP is equal to QSP. It is applicable even to NaCl which is completely precipitated by increasing Cl- using HCl gas through NaCl solution.
The common ion effect is also used for almost complete precipitation of a particular ion as it's sparingly soluble salt with very low value of KSP for gravimetric estimation by mass determination. Did you know? Strong acids are highly corrosive, such as sulfuric acid. They can dissolve metals. A base that dissolves in water is called an alkali. When you add an acid to an alkali, both are neutralized. The acid and alkali react together, forming water and a salt. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned. The equilibrium which involved ions in aqueous solution is called ionic equilibrium. According to Arrhenius, an acid is a substance that when added to water increases the concentration of H plus ions, whereas base is a substance that when added to water increases the concentration of OH minus ions. According to Bronsted and Lowry, an acid is a substance that can donate a proton. A base is a substance that can accept a proton. A base formed by the loss of proton by an acid is called conjugate base of the acid, whereas an acid formed by gain of a proton by the base is called conjugate acid of the base. According to Lewis, an acid is a substance which can accept a pair of electrons. A base is a substance which can donate a pair of electrons. pH of a solution can be defined as negative logarithm of hydrogen ion concentration. Hydrolysis is a process in which water reacts with salt to form an acid and a base. A buffer solution is defined as a solution which resists a change in pH on addition of small amount of acid or base. The solubility product of a sparingly soluble salt at a given temperature may be defined as the product of the concentrations of its ions in the saturated solution, with each concentration term raised to the power equal to the number of times the ion occurs in the equation representing the dissociation of the electrolyte.